Oversteer and understeer are two terms that are confusing to a lot of people. And as the old saying goes, oversteer is when you hit the wall with the back bumper, understeer is when you hit the wall with the front bumper. Obviously though, there's a lot more to it and today we're gonna talk about it. Now before we get into oversteer and understeer, keep in mind that from the factory, most cars are designed somewhat neutral. It doesn't mean they can't understeer or can't oversteer, but they're kind of designed not to do either too badly. Now, as you get into high performance driving, that's when those things become an issue. Now, if you truly want to dial out oversteer or understeer, you will need an adjustable suspension to do so. Adjustable sway bars, caster camper plates, adjustable shocks and struts, and coilovers are the best way to dial in a suspension. So let's start with oversteer. Oversteer is more common in rear wheel drive vehicles, but it can happen on any vehicle at all. Now oversteer is when the front track stays the same, but the rear of the car turns and gets loose and comes around. Now this is very common again in rear wheel drive cars because they're driving the rear wheels and they can get sideways. Now done intentionally, oversteering can be a lot of fun. Drifting is basically controlled oversteer. The goal is to get the rears loose and slide the car sideways in a controlled manner. But when it's uncontrolled and done unintentionally, it can be very dangerous, especially to a new driver. There's a few ways you can control oversteer. Before we talk about how to control oversteer, let's talk about what causes it. There's plenty of variables that can create oversteer. The most common one is simply too much throttle going into a corner, but weather conditions, worn tires, and not enough weight over the rear tires can all cause this. Now, if your car does begin to oversteer, what do you do to fix it? Well, the best thing to do is to get off the throttle, but do it slowly. You don't want to do it too fast. If you ever see these Mustang crashing videos, a lot of times somebody gets sideways because of oversteer and they quick off the throttle, which actually will jerk the car possibly in the other direction and makes it even more dangerous. So if you do have oversteer issues with your car and you do have that adjustable suspension, there's a few things you can change that will help with oversteer. The first thing you want to do is soften up the rear sway bar. If it's too stiff, it makes the car easier to lose traction, so softening it will allow you to put more power to the tires. Also consider loosening up the rear shocks. Now, if they're double adjustable, start with rebound and then try loosening some compression. Blurring the car a little bit is also going to help. It'll also make it harder to get up on the outside of the tire where traction is more easily lost. And lastly, more positive camber and more negative caster will also help. Now keep on, if you ever looked at a drift car, you can tell they have a ton of negative camber because those cars are designed to oversteer. Getting rid of some of that will definitely help on the street. So all those things can help control oversteer, but there's one thing you have to remember. At the end of the day, if you don't have a good tire on the back of your car, none of that stuff's gonna matter. And also, the best way to control oversteer is with the throttle. You can have the best suspension on the planet, but if you're too heavy on the throttle, you're still gonna get oversteer. Now let's talk about understeer. Now understeer is a lot more common in front wheel drive cars, but again, it can happen in any car at all. Now understeer is when you're basically going into a corner and the front tires go straight. So you're trying to push the car through the corner, but the car just simply keeps going straight. Now if you're ever driving in snow or rain, that's the common times you're gonna feel understeer because you're going to make a corner, it's wet, it's slick, you turn the wheels, but the car just keeps going straight. Now just like oversteer, there's a lot of different variables that can cause understeer. A lot of it has to do with suspension setup, weather conditions, and again, having good tires on the car. Now, unlike oversteer, when it comes to understeer, the quickest way to get out of it is to simply get off the throttle as fast as possible and get on the brakes. You're going straight and you're not sideways like you are with oversteer, so it's a lot safer to get off that throttle and simply get on the brake and correct the car. But just like oversteer, when it comes to understeer, there's a couple of suspension changes you can make that'll definitely help. If you have adjustable dampers, start stiffening them up. The stiffer dampers will allow the car not to flex as much in the corner and will help with understeer. Stiffer lower front springs will also help. Again, the same thing, by stiffening up the front suspension a little bit, it's gonna make the car less likely to slide. More negative camber and more positive caster will also help. That negative camber is gonna help keep that outside tire planted when leaning in the corner. Lastly, soften up the front sway bar. Soften that sway bar will keep both tires planted since so much pressure is on the outside tire, especially with front wheel drive cars. Now, the faster you try to go through corners, whether it's all wheel drive, front wheel drive, or rear wheel drive, the more that understeer and oversteer can become an issue. But knowing the causes of them and what kind of suspension changes to make should help you go fast and stay on the road.